Hey guys, welcome to Travel Related. In this video, we're gonna tell you how to plan a trip abroad. Katie and I have talked to a lot of people who wanna take their own trips and see the world, and we've realized what's actually stopping them from doing it. It's not the money, or the time off work, or other responsibilities, it's them. It's their own mind trying to convince them of all the reasons why they can't travel. We especially see this kind of mindset in Americans. For some reason, traveling isn't as big in our culture as it is in others. And obviously, we'd like to change that and help you bust through those fears of taking your first big trip. The best way to do that is to break down exactly how to make it happen. So in this video, we're giving you eight steps to show you how to start planning your first trip abroad. It's our hope that you'll see how doable it really is. So let's get started. Step one, make the decision to do it. If you want to travel, you are the only one standing in your way. Get excited about the planning process and start consuming information. I am constantly typing all of my questions into Google and countless blog posts or articles come up answering all of my questions. You should also watch YouTube videos for inspiration. Kind of like this one. Step two is to start saving. You don't have to have all the details figured out yet, but the sooner you can start saving, the better. After this video, you should check out the one we made on how to save money for travel. Step three, decide where and when you wanna go. Now there are several important factors to consider with this one. There is no right or wrong time to go, but it really depends on what you want out of your trip. Do you wanna go during the high season, low season, or our personal favorites, shoulder seasons? The high season is gonna have the best weather, but the prices are gonna be at the highest, you'll be around a ton of tourists, and accommodations are gonna fill up a lot faster. Next, you're gonna have the low season, which is gonna have the cheapest prices, fewer crowds, and a lot more places to stay but the weather typically sucks. That doesn't mean you can't have a great time though, so do what works for you. Then you have our personal favorite, the shoulder seasons, which are the two times of year that come in between the high and low seasons. Here you can find a nice mix of both worlds. Things aren't too expensive, it's not too difficult to find accommodations, and the weather's normally pretty great. My favorite times of the year to travel are normally around September or April. Although prices vary from season to season, they also vary from country to country. So decide what your budget is, and that can help you choose where and when you wanna go. Step four is to get a passport and check the visa requirements for the countries you plan on visiting. If you don't have a passport already, you should get one soon because the process takes about a month and you'll need your passport even before you leave because entering a passport number is required to book international flights. All countries have their own unique visa requirements that largely depend on the passport country of origin. For U.S. passport holders, we'll put a link in the description to the State Department's website where you can enter in any country you plan on visiting and it'll show you all the visa requirements. Step five, buy your plane ticket. In our experiences, buying an international ticket about three months out is the sweet spot for finding the best deal. Be sure to cross-reference prices on at least three different search engines. Our favorites are Google Flights, Momondo, and Skyscanner. We are also huge fans of Scotch Cheap Flights, but you need to be aware that most deals they send out only last one or two days, so you have to jump on them. But if you already know where and when you're gonna go, it shouldn't be hard to snag a deal. Step six, book your accommodations. Airbnb, Hostelworld, and Couchsurfing.com are all great places to find accommodations, depending on the type of place you'd like to stay. But also, don't be afraid to check out some of the broader travel websites, like Agoda or Booking.com. And if you choose to stay in a hostel, Katie and I made a video about how to choose the right one. We'll link it right up here. Step seven, make your lists. Destinations, sites, transportation, potential hostels, packing, all of it. As for me, making lists makes me feel so much more organized and peaceful. I can just look at my packing list and know that I've got everything that I need. I can also go to a city without forgetting something important that I wanted to see or do. It's a part of a planning process that I love because it gets me even more excited for all of the things that I'm gonna see. Lists are a great way to keep your mind at ease so you can enjoy your trip. Step eight, get on the plane and go. See? It's not as scary or complicated as you might have thought. These are eight simple steps to making your first trip abroad happen. 
Follow these guidelines and you'll be on your flight in no time. Trey and I want to show all of you that traveling doesn't have to be this huge, expensive life decision. It can become a normal part of your year and change your life for the better. Today's travel related question is, where are you planning to go on your next trip? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing where everyone is headed. For more travel related content, make sure to hit subscribe and give us the thumbs up. Trey and I are blood related. But we can all be travel related. See you next time. Bye y'all.